This is the Leader Lift Podcast, taking your leadership from one peak to the next. This podcast is for you, the leader, no matter what stage your leadership is at. Hey everyone, welcome to the Leader Lift Podcast. I'm Mike Kai, your host. Join me as I drop leadership tips and have insightful conversations with leaders from around the world. I'm so glad that you joined me today. Take a moment and subscribe to this podcast so you never miss an episode. Now, let's jump into this week's episode and take your leadership to the next peak. Hey everybody, welcome to the Leader Lift Podcast. I'm so glad that you've joined us. I want to tell you that it is soon to be renamed and rebranded as the Pound for Pound podcast, because it's all about leadership. You know, you're listening to part two of two of my interview with a very good friend of mine, Pastor Steve Kelly of Wave Church in Virginia Beach, Virginia. And in this podcast, make sure you listen to part one. Take a listen to part two of our conversation where we talk about leading through crisis, uh, the pound for pound principle and the parable of the talents, and his unique relationship with the military. Now, here's part two of the Pound for Pound podcast. Uh, just think about just a great influence across the world and how um, the world is a lot smaller. When Thomas Friedman wrote his book, The World is Flat, uh, about 15 years ago or so. Now, here we are today. What would you say the globe is like through this COVID situation? So can I just maybe just give one last thought about what you were just talking about? I think what's... Please. I think today is, and I want to answer that question. I think what God's doing today, obviously he's building relationally and there's a lot less emphasis on denominational, uh, you know, connectivity. Although I think there's nothing wrong with that, but sometimes we're wanting more from our, if we're in a denomination, we want more from our denomination than what they're able to do. And that's where you've got to make sure you bigger build a bigger relational world. And you don't forsake your heritage and you allow God to add truth to the truth you already have. And Mm -hmm. and to me, that's an important thing. Um, What is God doing through the COVID? God is up to something, Mike. I have no doubt about it. I mean, I mean, who would have thought that a pastor would ever be happy with 50% of his church in attendance on a Sunday? Um, Yeah. But that's the world. That's the world we live in. Um, since we obviously went into lockdown here in Virginia and we have campuses all over. So I've got to navigate, you know, many different states and many different challenges with all our campuses, but just right here in Virginia, at least, um, we, we saw the lockdown and we saw that we had to go online by the grace of God. We're already on television. We're already experienced on media. We were already broadcasting, <clears throat> excuse me, online. Um, mm-hmm. So it, but we had to make some radical changes to what that online service looked like um, because before we used to put a camera in our building and whatever we did in the building is what the online was. Well, that was going to be too long. We realized we want to keep people attention span. We had to look at the length of the service, the, uh, the, the, the duration of people watching, uh, we had to watch the engagement level. Um, you know, I wrote down a whole bunch of things that we measured. Let me put, can I just get my glasses for a second? Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Let me, let me look here. Um, we, we're looking at how many IP addresses we're watching, the duration, how long they're watching, the amount of engagement, the amount of decisions people are making online, the amount of income, how many people are connecting to new the Wave Church, um, new people, how do we get them in to our CGs when everything was in lockdown and we weren't allowed to meet in person, um, mm-hmm. pastoral care, um, and then hel- helping people overcome the fear of this and not giving into the spirit of fear of it, um, you know, getting people to register for the uh, online campus so we can pastor them. Um, boy, there's a lot in it. I found myself preaching some of my best messages But those messages went from about 32 minutes to 25 minutes. The worship went instead of 20 minutes to about 10 minutes because it was all online and we didn't want to lose the audience. Um, And we wanted to, and then we had to come up with a kids program. We had to come up with, uh, you know, coffee with a pastor and we have it now. We're actually launching it again. Online coffee with a pastor and helping our online campus, which is now a new campus, 
Which, by the way, uh, Mike, our online campus is bigger than all of our campuses combined. And this right. is nothing to do with who's, who was in Wave that watches online. Now, I mean, they're also, they, they only add to that figure now. So this is where we're at. We're at last Sunday, uh, we had 56 or 58% of people that, that were in person in church last Sunday and uh, compared to the same Sunday last year, which was not COVID. So you're comparing mm. an apple to an apple. And so right. who would have thought you'd be happy? That was our biggest attendance since we've come back in person. I have That's amazing. Pre I've preached better sermons by shortening it, and I've had to work harder to write them shorter. I've mm. actually done more preparation to write them shorter. Um, I've used, it's, it's been fascinating. Our, our, I, I feel like I'm preaching better sermons than I ever have. Um, well, I can't wait to, I should, be, I should be listening to them because you are, to me, one of my favorite preachers. I told you that before. And for you to think that you're getting better um, is number one, it's an inspiration. Uh, number two, that's awesome. I need to hear, I need to hear some more of this fresh bread because I honestly think you're one of my favorite preachers and uh, I love your passion and I love your, I love the, uh, the rhema, the revelation that you get from whenever you're preaching. So yes, <laughs> I got to listen to more of you, man. That's awesome, Steve. You're being very kind, Mike. Thank you. I do. Well, I mean, I'm I not I just yeah. preached down in one of our campuses last night in Wilson. And it was like a midweek, once a month, I just get all, I, I, I speak on the first Sunday of every month to all of our campuses live, but every campus I go to once a quarter and have a special midweek service. And in Wilson, North Carolina, they're packed to the rafters. I mean, North Carolina State is allowed to be in person, sitting next to each other, and the building was packed. And I've got to tell you, that did me good. But I preached a message that I preached here uh, nine months ago on the raven. I stole it from Bobby Shula. It was such a good thought. And then I wrote my own version. Oh, Bobby's awesome. Uh, yeah. And I wrote my own version of it. It was honestly my, I thought to myself, I preached a good here at Great Neck when I preached it eight months ago. But do you know when you've actually, like in a sense, our main campus here are getting me writing all my fresh material. But when I preach it somewhere else that haven't heard it, I'm more comfortable with it. And I went, mm. I, think, I think I did better last night than I did to our main campus here eight months ago. So, and it was just, it, to me, I think, you know, I wanted to counter fear. I wanted people to feel safe. I didn't want people to feel the pressure to choose that you have to come back. If you're elderly right. at risk, that's why we have online campuses. We have lost a dear brother in the Lord in our church. One of our great leaders, he passed away yep. of COVID. And we buried him. My son mm. had COVID. Sam, who's, uh, let me see, Josh is 30. Sam's 28. And Sam got it, and he just got a temperature and lost his taste. And for him, mm. it was just a annoying thing to have happen to him on the way. And I've had that, my own son, where I wasn't even remotely worried for him other than the fact that his wife was having a baby and I wanted him to be at the birth and, uh, and get clear of COVID before that. And then I mm -hmm. buried somebody in our own church. So um, I do think I hate how much it's been politicized. Yeah. I hate how much, you know what I call them? I call them COVID Nazis. People who just, you know, just, yeah. um, you know, just saying things like you're doing an online service and you get the comments, you know, why isn't every single person wearing a mask? And, you know, why isn't there better social distancing? What they can't see is with camera angles, people are social distancing, but you can't see that because it's so one dimensional. Yeah, um, yeah we're, we're down, Mike. I think all up across all of our campuses, we're down about 3% in our ties and offering, but we're still up on last year. Mm. So compare the wow. income. So I think that's good. Um, yeah. my, the thing that, that frustrates good. me is the amount of people coming to faith in Christ. Um, we've seen a bit of a downturn on that. I think people are thinking more about just watching online and, you know, and the bringing culture, we've got to get that back. So, I mean, yeah. they're all the challenges. That's what's happening for COVID a wave. 
Yeah, we are. Um, Hawaii is on the tail end of everything that's going on in the upper 48. And so what's happening is we're still closed as a state. Um, we, um, travel, you can come here, but you got to quarantine for two weeks. And it's very, very slow in decision making process, kind of driving us bonkers here. Um, we're getting maybe 20 to 20 percent. Uh, 20 percent, 25 is a good number. But because of the rise in cases and the extra testing that they did. So, of course, that's going to prolong some of the concern about coming back to a building. Um, yeah, we're rejoicing when we get 25. Oh, that was great. You know, but we're the same thing as you online. Crazy, crazy numbers online. And so we're trying to put everything into that right now. At the same time, trying to service the 20% coming back. Um, but also our state, you know, the three, it's a three legged economy. Um, you've got building, you've got tourism, and you've got military, AKA uh, government state and, and, um, state government as well. So right now we're on a two legged stool building is still happening. And I think it's the building that's going to pull us out of this, the more we build, but our tourism is shot is shot. So the domino effect of all the small businesses that have been closing all the restaurants. Um, so that's going on here, but we're praying that as we open up the economy, that, uh, that the governor makes um, wise decisions and we can continue to start growing again the way that we need to. Um, so yeah, we're on a three-legged stool and we're only on two legs. And so we were losing our balance here. Yeah. But hopefully that in mid-October, that can start the, the, the trend of a turnaround. Steve, I want to um, transition into something. Um, I love your relationship. And it's a thing that I've modeled as well, your relationship with the military. Tell us about that burden and that passion that you have for the military. So when I moved here on the plane flying from Sydney, Australia, actually, I stopped at Hawaii on the way. Uh, over Christmas and New Year with my wife and kids. And I'm on the plane flying out of Sydney Airport on my way to Honolulu. And I'm praying. You imagine I'm coming to take on, I'm taking on a church that had a couple of hundred people in it. Wow. And I said, God, what's the first thing you want me to do in this church? The first thing. You know, there's a principle of first mentions, which is an important yep. principle of interpreting scripture. And um, so, God, what's your first instruction to me? And do you know what the Lord told me? He said, honor the military. And look, Mike, I didn't understand just how big the military presence was in this area. Norfolk right. is the largest Navy base in the world. Crazy <laughs> uh, big. <laughs> we've, got, we've got NASA Langley here. We've got Camp Perry here. Do you know what Camp Perry is? That's the farm. No. That's every person trained to be a spy in the CIA. That's, that's where the farm is. Right down the road. Um, right oh my here. gosh! Because I, because all the books I was reading on Mitch Rapp and uh, you name it, it was a. You always re referenced the farm. <laughs> it, it is a. It is a forty-minute drive from my house. Um, wow. And so we are. I think we have. I, anyway, um, you know, it's things you just don't say. I guess we have a lot. Okay. We've got okay. Army, Navy, Air Force, NASA Langley. We've got uh, a Marine base here. We got an Army base here. We got the fighter squadron for the East Coast fleet of all the, we got six, air, five aircraft carriers here. We've got all the SEAL teams here on the East Coast, two, four, six, eight, and 10. Big, and I honestly didn't know any of that, Mike. All wow. I know is I'm going, God, what's the first thing? He says, honor the military. Well, I've gone out of my way to do that. Every Veterans Day, every Memorial Day, we have a special service. We, we literally have the biggest flags we can buy and hang them off the front of our building we put hundreds of flags all over our property and we do a special service honoring the military. We'll bring in, uh, often we're in the past, we've brought in guest speakers who served in the military, who've had a distinguished career and we'll have them share their story. We celebrate our own military people in our own church. Um, nowadays, what we're doing is we're actually putting the spotlight on some of the people who are in our church who've done great things. And I mean, <laughs> Oh my gosh, I love it. As a result of that, I've twice had the opportunity to fly out on two different aircraft carriers, land it on the aircraft carrier, spent a couple of nights talking with the sailors on aircraft carriers, flown off the wire and flown home as a validation, recognition and appreciation of all the good work that we as a church are doing for the military. I've gone out to an wow. LHD in a hovercraft, went inside, the CO 
was a guy who part a wave and he said, I want to show you what we do. I want to help you know what these men and women do. So when we pastor them, um, and so to be honest with you, I find myself, the more I honor them, the more they keep just, you know, just being so kind and opening their world um, to me to help give me greater insight. It's the best job. Incredible. In the world. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we, you, you've taught me that. I don't know how many times I've called you before uh, Memorial Day weekend or Veterans Day. I said, Steve, how do, how do I do this? And you've taught me that. So if you were to come here, you'd see the hugest flags off of our, our buildings, uh, flags all over the, all in, all in the ground, all over the place. And so thank you so much for that. I really appreciate that. And, I, and, love, and, I love how you, yeah. And, and let alone, how, how, how much should we honor our military? Like, right. like to me, that's all that matters. People keep saying, thank you. And I go, no, 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 no. Thank you for serving. Thank you for your service. Right. Thank you for the sacrifice, the families. I see firsthand the divorce rate. I see firsthand they get nine month deployments and, and, and the cost that they make to be away to, for our freedom. Uh, it's amazing. I'm sorry. You get me on that subject. I won't stop. Yeah, no, no. I thank you for reinforcing that. And I totally agree with you. And uh, I'm, 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 I'm with you all the way. I had the privilege of doing Memorial Day weekend. Um, of doing that service in front of the USS Arizona. And we got special uh, passes in order to get that. It took a move of eight majors um, in, in order for that to take place. We were on Ford Island and in the background over my shoulder, my gosh, it was one of the most amazing opportunities that we had uh, to honor our military. That was, that was fantastic. So thank you for uh, being the inspiration behind that. Steve, I want to, uh, before I let you go, I want to ask you um, one question um, based upon the parable of the talents. You know, I wrote my book called The Pound for Pound Principle. It's a 10 year anniversary. It's the cat of nine lives. It never dies. It always comes back to life. And um, I'm going to write more books than that. But this one right now seems to have some miles in it. Um, it's based upon the parable of the talents. I would love for you to talk about just the quick subject on, 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 on potential and using the gifts God gave you and what, what is, how important is that? And you've seen that in your own life. Yeah. I mean, by the way, your book's amazing. Uh -huh. Mike, and, uh, you know, Thank there you. are some books that actually have, uh, you know, there's some songs in church that have a use by date and there's other songs that have a longer use by date and no hmm. doubt your message in your book has a very extended use by date. It's still relevant, still helping. And Thank so you. I am looking forward to your next book, by the way. Um, yeah. I, I, yeah, I think um, to me that parable of the talents is a couple of things that comes out. And, and I think you, you've really expressed it very <clears throat> well in your book. I think the, the, one of the most important things to not forget in that parable of the talents is, isn't it interesting that three different people had in a sense, different perspectives on the master. Like mm. two of them said, well, Lord, you entrusted me with two and five talents. So here, this is what I've done because you trusted me. Now the same master, now let's go to the third person. He said, I know that you're a wicked man. I know that you reap where you don't sow. It's the same master. Isn't it funny how people can have, look at someone the same person with a different view and how you look at someone will determine, mm. you know what I mean? Your reality. Yeah. Right. Is they, <clears throat> two of them said, master, you trusted me. The other one said, Oh, I don't, you're a shrewd, wicked man. And as a result of your perspective of someone, isn't it funny how two people can look at one, at, at you as a leader and one person have one opinion of you and another person have another opinion of you. But oh, good. honestly, I think to me, one of the great things that comes out of that is, you know, how you see people determines your fruitfulness um, and the people that God puts in over your life. And so the, the parable tells, and remember, it is a parable, as you say in your book very well, it is a parable. Um, and, and, and how the, the master says, well done, their good and faithful servant to the two that reproduced. And to the one that didn't, he said, you wicked servant. So a lot of people look at faithfulness as being mm. the goal. But actually, can I say, 
it wasn't what faithfulness and you and I've talked about this um, is fruitfulness. And mm. we think faithful is just hanging in there. No, no. If we're going to be the people who are faithful, we're, we're doing something. We're, we're right. using what God's given us and we don't have to. And I love what you write in there too. We know it's not perfectionism. It's not trying to be the best. It's not trying, it's just doing with what God's given you, what's in front of you. And to me, I think they're important thoughts. Your view of the people that God put in your life really determine how fruitful you are. And, uh, right. and then it's not just being faithful, hanging in, hanging on, because that man right. hung on to what he had. That's, and, yeah. that, and that would be a definition of faithful in some people's minds. Right, yeah. But, Turn but it the world saw it as wicked. And I think it's yeah. wicked just to hang on to what we have. We've got to be fruitful. In John 15, it so says, good. every branch in me that bears no fruit, he takes away. It's possible to be in Jesus and not fruitful. God mm. is interested in results. He demands <laughs> results. And uh, so, good. so that's my thought, Mike. I hope it helped. Maybe one last thing. What would you say to the pastor who may not be, who may be, may, may be in it for the last 10 years um, and hasn't grown like he thought it would? COVID actually kind of rocked his socks a lot more than, we, uh, than he expected. And he is trying to be the two talent or the five talent guy, not just holding on, but trying to maximize everything he gave or everything that he has. What would you say to him right now? Um, I would say a couple of things. One, um, you got to look at the size of the town or the city and the demographics of where you are. And a lot of those pastors with those smaller churches have some of the biggest churches in the world. You take somebody who pastors in New York with a population of, you know, whatever, 10 million or, you know, and, and you look at maybe a church that's considered mega. But I got a friend who pastors in Martinsburg, West Virginia, and he's got, it's a town of 18,000 people. And he has a thousand people in his church. And he's always Ooh, asking, huge. he's asking me for advice. I go, buddy, when I have that many people in my church, I'll be offering advice. So you've got to put everything in context, first of all. Secondly, you've got to just know what God's called you to do. And, and it's, not just, it's not just one measurement that defines success. It really isn't. Right. When I talk about being fruitful, I'm not talking about having more numbers. You know what I mean? I'm talking about being fruitful like the people you have are growing. They're reaching others. Their lives are being blessed. It's, it's the measurement that needs to be redefined in that. But right. we've got to be make, we've got to be committed to reproducing. I say to pastors like all the time, they say, Steve, I give an altar call every week and no one's getting saved and I just given up. And I say, no, 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 no. If you've given up on that, you're teaching your church that this is something you're never going to lose ground on. We've right. got a campus in Greenville right now, Mike. It's our smallest campus on its, on its, just put a new pastor in there. We just bought a building for it. There's a, on a good Sunday, there was 120 people. And right now with COVID and it's, it's a, it's a 50% African American campus and African Americans are disproportionately uh, at risk of COVID more than anybody else. So we have 27% of our church attendance coming in person right now. And, uh, and I'm just saying to him, no, no, we've got to get some new measurables. We've got, we, we got to understand you are being successful. You are doing a great job of what did you have. And I've got to tell you something. Uh, to quote Ed Young, the ministry is brutal. And it's brutal. It is beautiful and it's brutal. And right. it's, it's not for the fame. It just isn't. And uh, the pastors are, are throwing in the towel now in this season more than ever. We see the divorce rates gone up. We see suicides gone up in this season. And I want to say to the pastors, come on, you were born for moments like this. This, is, this is your moment. This is your hour. This is when it's you know, steadfast and, and, and you being there and shepherding and loving and caring for your people and giving them something to follow. Any fool can lead in the good season. The leaders, Amen. great leaders are surfaced in the time of famine and the time of lack and this world is crying somebody please lead me and it mm. should be the church 
So good. So good. Thank you, Steve. Everybody, you're listening to Pastor Steve Kelly from Wave Church, Virginia Beach, Virginia, and so much more. He's a great preacher, a great pastor to pastors. I consider him one of my great friends. Steve, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Love you, Mike. Love you, too. Make sure you get his book, The Accent of Leadership, and go to wavechurch.com and find his church. And make sure you find it and listen and download his messages. Get all his leadership stuff, whatever you can, everybody. He's one of the great leaders of our day. Thank you, Steve. I'll talk to you soon, okay? Love you, my friend. God bless you. Honor to be Love with you. Too. God bless you. Thank you. Wasn't that an incredible interview? I told you it was so nice that we had to do it twice. Pastor Steve Kelly from the Virginia Beach, The Wave Church. And if you missed it, make sure you listen to part one and sure and be sure to go back and check it out. Also, I wanna encourage you, because I already said be sure, to access more leadership resources on my site, mikekai.tv. There you can pick up the 10 year anniversary of the leadership edition of my book, The Pound for Pound Principle. And you can also access for a limited time the instant replays of our two recent Pound for Pound online summits. One here in the United States and our most recent one in South Africa and a couple more regions and countries we have yet to be revealed. It's a global tour, everybody. God bless you and we'll see you next time on the Pound for Pound podcast.